Hi everyone, this is Taylor with Active Pro Lighting, and here we are today to introduce our new product, which is a 40 watt light that is basically like a shop light, and this four foot light is only 40 watts with two integrated tubes, and these this fixture replaces the older technology, which is the uh, T8 or T12 fixture. You see a lot of these in vertical racking operations, we do tissue culture, our home grows. This is a very common fixture that's out there. So essentially this unit would be replacing that and it's an all integrated fixture with a few more benefits being lower energy, uh, much more effective spectrum for plant growth and uh, better PPFD efficiency. So we're going to show the tests that prove those numbers and uh, so you know what you're getting before you make that purchase. So thanks for joining us. So before we get into the tests, I wanted to do a quick, simple unboxing here to kind of show you what's included with the 40 watt fixture. And you can see inside that we have the fixture itself along with a nice power cable. And there's the fixture. We also have some suspension kit options for hanging suspension or you can do direct screw in installation method. But the most simple method is uh, to use the hanging hooks that are included here. So if you have a suspension kit, you can just hang it right there on those, on either end. That's probably the easiest option for a lot of people. So it's a clear PC cover. The whole body is PC, so it's, it's very light. It's a super light fixture. It's not like the traditional all metal fixture. So it helps a bit with the weight and the profile is a bit thinner so you can place them even closer uh, to the plant canopy. So let's turn this guy on. So as you can see now we have it uh, suspended over the table here and we did the standard suspension mode where we used the clips to install it so simple to do that that way and now when we power it on we simply pull the pull tab here you can see how bright that fixture is, only 40 watts, so 20 watts per strip. Those are two strips there. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention that was included in the packing is the connector piece. So you can actually connect these units end to end up to five fixtures on a 120 volt circuit. So you simply use this guy and you plug him in to this end, and then the next unit along, you plug plug it on to that end and then you can continue these uh, down a row. So you can have up to five in a row, so that's 20 feet of, of these units you can have running on one circuit. So that helps for a cleaner installation in a lot of cases. So to get right into the spectral analysis portion of our test, we use our plant lighting analyzer here and we get it extra close to the plant uh, light here and you can see that the data here shows there are 660 nm wavelengths and 445 nm wavelengths present so one chip is putting out two wavelengths um, it's not red blue red blue red blue chips it's a single chip that's putting out two wavelengths so it's more efficient in that regard and more uniform for the different wavelengths um, this red and blue combination is formulated for plant growth and it's very effective for things like flowering uh, and fruiting and even uh, root development. Uh, the blue is very helpful there. So you can also use this fixture in a greenhouse. If you have a lot of sunlight coming in and you kind of want to boost the flowering stage or the, or the fruiting stage of a plant, you can use this light in that case as well. So a few different uh, effective things you can do with this uh, red bloom spectrum. So for the spectral analysis portion of the test, we're going to look at the fluorescence. These are 6500K CCT T8 lamps, and we'll quickly do a reading here of those. And you can see that the spectrum has a little bit of red and some green and some blue, but it's a little bit all over the place, right? Fluorescent technology has been the same for quite a while. Um, and this is what the plants are seeing. So instead of a, a large swath of photons that it needs, it's kind of getting a piecemeal um, 
sort of solution. And to the human eye, this looks bright and good, but it, it is, it, for the plants, it's not as effective as it could be. Uh, I wanted to show you the sun-white spectrum, which you can see here. It's not as red as the other spectrum. It's more of a white color, so we call it the sun-white spectrum. Uh, we can take the reading here, and I can explain more to you why we call it that. So we don't. We want to get close as we can here to take the reading, and as you can see here, the wavelengths from 400 nanometers to 700 and beyond are completely full. So if I were to take this outside and show you what's under the sunlight, the natural sunlight, we get a similar result. And one other piece of data that we use to, to prove that is what's called CRI, the Color Rendering Index. Natural sunlight has 100 CRI, but this light's putting out right around 95. As you can see, the, the, uh, the RA number is 95 there. So from R1 to R13, it is very high numbers near 100. So we call it the sun-white spectrum because it actually mimics natural sunlight with those high CRA chips. And you're actually getting even into the 800. So the combination of the 660NN and the 730 is what's called the Emerson effect. And that can actually increase the rate of photosynthesis in plants by around 20%. So you can have shorter uh, cycles on your plant growth. So if you're really in a production mode, if you can cut that 20% down, then you're saving a lot of time and you're, you're able to put out more product. Uh, this light is also effective in laboratory settings because you can clearly see what is going on with the plants. If you, uh, uh, more colors will stand out under this high CRI light, so you can see if there's any uh, nutrient deficiencies, any sort of uh, aphid problems, any other sort of microscopic issues under this light is much more clear to spot. So catch a problem before it becomes a, an even bigger problem is uh, one thing that this light is good at helping people do. And now for the PPFD portion of the test, we usually take a point from the center for the PPFD that's 12 inches from the light to the spectrometer for the fluorescent and the LEDs, just so that's a constant number. And then we provide you with the uh, graphs of the entire two by four foot after that. So for this one, we'll make sure that it's a foot away, the spectrometer to the light, which it is. And we do our reading now. U moles or PPFD 75.581. Now for the sun white spectrum, the LED lamp, we're going to get our reading from the center point right now. And that number is oops, that number is 86.579. Now, as I didn't want to make this video too long, I put together a graph over a 2 by 4 foot area of the PPFD numbers for every 6 inches outward from that center point. So we have our fluorescent on the left, our sun white spectrum in the middle, and our red bloom on the right. And the main difference is, even though these 40 watt lights are much less energy than the fluorescents, they are putting out higher PPFD numbers. And they're also putting out even more uniform PPFD numbers. Especially when you get close to the plant canopy, these numbers start to really pick up versus the fluorescent. So you can imagine at something like six inches or even three inches from the canopy, those numbers would be even, even greater. Well, that's it for our video today. I hope that this video was informative for you and you have a better understanding of some of the latest horticultural lighting technology that's available out there. Um, we like to provide our data for users so they are clear before they make any kind of decisions about what horticultural lighting systems they want to go with next. We try to provide the data up front uh, and not try to hide anything. And if you guys have any questions for me, my email is taylor at activegrowled.com. Please leave comments below. I learn a lot from y'all and I hope you can learn something from me. Um, let's keep the exchange going so we can improve our technology and provide solutions for you that cut your energy usage and your carbon output and do what's right for our plants and what's right for the planet. Thanks again and uh, until next time.